know how important community is in any organization. Whether we're dealing with teaching an elementary school or running a company, when we have a community where individuals feel safe and confident, not only is our quantity of work increased, but more importantly, the quality of work is increased. And so I'm speaking about this term community. Well, for a lot of educators, they think of the community as being their school, the place where they go every day to educate. Other educators may think of it as their individual classroom. However, there's others that just think of community as the actual location where they go every day to do their job. Or maybe it's a club that you're organized in. Or maybe it's a sports team that you either participate in or that you're a fan of. The Vancouver Canucks is a community of fandom. But today, I want to talk about the community of geeks. And geeks to me is, this is this term, and I'm going to spend a little bit of time about this, but just how important it is. And what we can actually do with the power of geek, not only in the school system, but even beyond that. So this is all about specifically how we can harness the power of geek in the classroom. But I think there's going to be elements where you can take it beyond that and go into your workplace, your club, your sports organization, or whatever. But I am going to speak a little bit about the classroom. So, my background. I'm a teacher. I'm an educator. I've been, going, I've been doing this for, I don't know, 10, 11 years, something like that. And I want to talk a little bit about when I started. And as a student teacher, and as a first, first year, second year, probably even third, fourth year teacher, the concept of being cool was very important to me. Now, I'm not proud of this, but this is absolutely, this is 100% true. I wanted to be cool. Now, maybe I had just seen too many, you know, episodes of, of Saved by the Bell as a kid, where you get that, like, all the students have been like, yeah, that is a cool teacher. And me as a teacher being like, I'm making a difference. You know, and <laughs> this is all true. I wanted to make that difference, but I was doing it for the wrong reasons. I was just trying to be cool. You know, and I think a lot of us that get into education have this same kind of, this, this, this almost problem as we go into it of taking ourselves a little too seriously. And again, this is real. I was so consumed with looking cool and being cool and talking cool and convinced that that is what was going to make a difference for these kids in their lives. So here I was hiding behind the frosted tips, these, 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 terrible silver sunglasses, puka shells. It was, oh, it was, it was a scene, okay? But really, it took me a while before I realized, you know what? As much as I think that's cool, that's not cool. I have an inner geek. And we all have this inner geek, this little being inside us that is what brings forward that excitement and that energy and what will truly inspire others to become a geek just like us. So I keep using this term geek, right? So what, what does geek actually mean? When, when I say this geek, you know, I think a lot of us, you know, when we close our eyes, we have this stereotypical view of that socially awkward, strange, weird hair, pocket protector, big glasses. And once upon a time, that existed, without a doubt, okay? But it's changing, okay? It's no longer just that stereotypical, maybe, computer nerd or that computer geek, but instead, Geeks are everywhere. You can be a music geek. You can be a movie geek. You can be a sports geek. You can be a foodie geek. You, if you're in the southern US, you could probably be a Donald Trump geek. It's whatever you feel you are passionate about. That's what makes a geek. It's passion. So when you have that passion, that excitement for whatever it is, it's infectious. People look at it and they're like, oh. I'm not really into that, but he is, so wow, maybe I can get to that level, okay? Being passionate is being a geek, and it's cool. So is this true? It's cool to be a geek? 100%. It is cool to be a geek. And if you're working in an area, again, whether it be your workplace or your school or whatever, and there's this stigma where it's not cool to be a geek, then something needs to change because we need to go beyond those 80s movie references of Revenge of the Nerds, where geeks are looked down upon by the jocks, and we need to realize that geeks and passion is what's making a difference. I'm going to talk a little bit about 
where I'm actually working right now. Uh, I work at a high school in Langley, British Columbia, Walnut Grove Secondary. Uh, we have about a little over 1,800 students, uh, and with such a large school, we have a lot of opportunity to teach many different avenues. So everything from uh, you know woodwork to electronics to shop to engineering, and of course all the academics. Specifically, even though I've just now explained, hey, you know what? It's not just computer geeks that are out there. There's all sorts of geeks. I'm actually going back a little bit because, yeah, this is all about computer geeks now. Um, I, I work with about three other individuals, and we kind of run the, the geek area of the school, which is the computer wing. So it's actually a, it's an amazing department, and, and I'm thankful every day that I'm part of it. And uh, I, I don't like to use the term courses, but what we actually are doing in this school is we're providing 24 opportunities. And we have developed over the years a variety, a multitude of specializations, areas where students who are already passionate about this area and those already computer geeks can come in and say, you know what, my buddy, he takes computers over in this other school, but yeah, they, they only have like six or seven courses. It's these general courses, computers nine, computers 10, maybe uh, like a coding 11 or something like that. We've been able to develop this extensive list of, again, I'm saying courses, opportunities where students can really find what it is they're passionate about and move forward with that. So what do you actually see when you walk in? That's the background in terms of what we can offer these students. Well, what you see is a visual masterpiece of nerdosity. This is... <laughs> And I'm, this is all real here. You walk into our wing, and, and you've got to think, we're a regular school in which we have, you know, the lockers are all the same color and the trim is all the same color. And then you walk into our nerd wing, and you see Han Solo, frozen in carbonite, leading you into room 201. You see the TARDIS from Doctor Who leading you into 204. You've got the massive submarine door leading you into 206. Okay, this is nerdy stuff, but it's awesome, because when people walk by, they're like, that's kind of cool. Then they walk into the room, and they are immediately immersed with pictures of the Avengers, and Iron Man, and Spider-Man, and life-size um, of, of cutouts of Gandalf, and Yoda, and everything that every nerd is like, yes, I'm home. They love it. <laughs> okay? On the computers, we actually have toys. There are toys everywhere. Now, when I say toys, I'm talking about things that students have created in our 3D modeling class, our 3D prop design class, or our 3D animation class, where they have actually designed stuff and we've printed it on our 3D printers. So there's these cool toys everywhere. The people that are already the geeks, we, we had them at hello. That's not a problem, okay? It's the other ones, though, the ones that are like, uh, I'm not really into computers. This right here, this shiny surface, is what's drawing them in. Because they walk by and they see, whoa, that, that's kind of cool. I've never seen a 3D printer. Oh, I, I, what's making all that noise? Oh, that's really cool. I've never seen this before. So we're drawing in the existing geeks, but we're also trying to convert the geeks. But that's the superficial side of it. What are we actually providing? Let's pop the hood. It comes down to three guiding principles that we are doing in our department, and we try to do this every day of every year. Guidance, independence, and choice. And for the educators around the world, they understand that this is something where education is moving towards. Personalized learning, not going with set curriculum. We are trying to go as far away as possible from the, the curriculum says, teach ABC. So then as a teacher, I will show you ABC, and now you as a student, please show me ABC. That is such an archaic method of education, and everyone knows we're moving away from it. And I'm pretty excited to think that we've actually been doing this. This is something we've already been doing, and it's working great. Our role as a teacher is not to stand there and say, everybody, this is what you need to know, now know it. We're guiding them. We're letting them use some independence, say, this is what I want to do, and giving them that choice and it's working. The projects, the, the things that we're creating, they're pretty incredible. So what are we actually trying to create here? We've now enticed them to come in and buy into this geek community, and it's cool to be a geek. And we've actually got them now using the computers and learning how to guide themselves and learn on their own. What are they creating? We're going away from the standard computer model, model of really a flat rectangle that's full of pixels. 
and we're going into the creation of tangible product, something that can be designed on a computer and then put into their hand or put onto a channel or put onto something that they can share with the world. It's this idea of tangible products in computers, which is really continuing our ability to get this buy-in. So what are we using to do this? We're using nerd toys. Okay? We are using these cool, awesome, nerdy, geeky things that normally students would not have any chance to get their hands on until they get into industry. But instead, they get to walk over to the panel of 3D printers and start using them. Or maybe use the drone to capture that helicopter shot for a video they're filming. Or maybe they need to get access to the green room studio, or use the CNC machine, or use the vinyl cutter, or use the laser engraver. These are industry-level toys that we're letting the kids use. Now, <laughs> We're holding their hand while they're using them because some of these are really expensive. But it's still, they're using it and they're walking away with, I made this. Oh, like, like in woodshop or in art? No, in computers class. It's amazing. So, I mean, this is just a, a brief overview of some of the things that we're showcasing, right? These cool videos where we're actually getting that that dramatic cinematic helicopter shot, or this amazing modeling that's almost ready to be put into a video game, or the variety of 3D models, or these, these motion graphics that I have no doubt a marketing department would say, yeah, we need to hire you. This is incredible stuff. Companies are paying big money for this, and we're getting it out of 14, 15, 16, 17-year-olds. It's working. Our biggest challenge has nothing to do with keeping up with the Kardashians. I don't even want an interest in that. It's all about keeping up with the geeks. These geeks are so far ahead of us. And as an educator, and I know there's other educators out there nodding their head, it's a scary thought that these students now know more about what we're supposed to be the expert of, and they're gonna know more than we ever will. Within 10 minutes, a student can access a variety of YouTube tutorials that he can put together a lesson plan for himself that will far surpass him in my ability to teach that same program. And as soon as you get over that, you're rolling. It's all good. Although it was a bit of a humility factor that first time when I'm like, oh yeah, I can, I can try to help you on that. I have no idea what he's trying to do. But what do we actually believe? We honestly believe that by really pushing our students and buying into this geek community, that we're bridging the gap between high school and industry. And I'm not saying that there's no need for post-secondary education and specific training in this world, but I believe that we're able to shorten this bridge. We're able to get these students to learn and create stuff with the vast amount of information available at their fingertips so that when they finish high school, or maybe not even finish high school at this point, in grade 10 and 11, they are actually creating stuff which the industry is recognizing. And I've got some stories in a bit that I want to share. Because really, I can talk about this stuff all I want, but when we talk about stories and what makes somebody really say, yes, I, I understand, it's all about people. So I want to introduce you to some geeks. And the first pair of geeks I want to introduce you to are two, uh, two guys. Uh, they are, they'd be proud to know that I'm talking about them today, calling them geeks. They're grade 12 students, and I'd like you to just quickly uh, meet Isaiah and Josh. Little Cassidy didn't have a great start in life. Born in the woods in Langley, the feral feline wasn't doing well. He uh, had an injury and lost both of his back legs. So... He was in pretty rough shape when we rescued him. Without his back feet, the lively kitty can't get around the way he thinks he can. Because we're going to have to make it bigger, and then this in general is going to happen. One of our secretaries found uh, the Facebook page, and then uh, she let our teacher know. The Walnut Grove grade 12 students set to work designing a kind of wheelchair for Cassidy to get around. Yeah, it might be too a week's worth of work with modeling software and their school's 3D printer created this prototype. CTV News was there when they tried it for the first time. It was good to see and then now we'll just be able to do some adjustments on the height and everything. 3D printed prosthetics are becoming more common for all sorts of animals. This is pretty impressive for a couple of teens just getting started. It's pretty cool to be able to be doing this. Maybe not a big deal for them but it's a huge deal for this little guy. They really are giving Cassidy a second chance to have a really great life. Penny Dafwas, CTV News.
the uh, the group of computer teachers that I that I'm so lucky to work alongside. Uh, every year we talk about what is it, what is our wow moment of the year, and uh, you know that moment. We go, wow, that was really cool. Without a doubt, this one right here happened in October. I'm like, well. I've used my wow moment for the year. Now, now what am I going to do? But this was, this was incredible. And, and it doesn't matter what it is. There's always something that blows me away. Like the time where I was kind of proud of the idea that, wow, I've got this YouTube video with like 200,000 views. At which point, one of my students said, hey, Mr. Radford, can you check out my new video? I just hit 2.8 million. <laughs> wow. Or my two 16-year-old students who uh, actually on their own created a wedding videography company and have now done three weddings and are currently booking for next summer. Wow. And then this one. Like, there is, you can't go past the cute factor on. This is unbelievable. And our school's social media blew up after this because we had people contacting us from around North America saying, I need one for my dog. I need one for my cat. I need one for my hamster. And we're like, we can't keep up with this. But this is industry. This is what they should be going to a professional company for. And high school students are now able to do it. it it's, it's incredible. Our geek alumni is starting to grow up. And I talked about how many opportunities we have. You know, we have people like Kayla, who graduated about four years ago. She took 11 courses, now a visual effect artist at Artifacts. Josh, who took 12 opportunities with us, working at Method Studios as a visual effects artist. Kenzo, who we couldn't get rid of if we tried. 14 opportunities or 14 courses in high school. I mean, how he lived there. He was there for English and computers. That's where he was. He's now a modeler at EA. One of the best stories on this one is, it's unbelievable. Reina. Reina graduated last year. She took 14 courses. Again, we couldn't get rid of her if we tried. She then got an opportunity to go on a tour of EA, showed her portfolio, and was now, was hired in July, after graduating high school, to be a full-time modeler. She, without any schooling, she is now working at EA full-time. They had to rewrite a position for her at the HR level. She's just finished doing a lot of the modeling on the new UFC 2 game that EA Sports just put out. It's incredible. We have something we call Return of the Geek, and if you thought I could get through this whole thing without a few more Star Wars references, you are very incorrect. Return of the Geek is when we have our past graduates come back, and they say, "Can I? I'd love to come back and talk about what I'm doing. And this is creating a snowball effect, because they come back, and we have now a classroom full of grade eights, nines, tens, who are like, wow, this is so cool that this is out there. We welcome them with open arms, and it's just doing nothing but enhancing our program. So where do we go from here? This is a true statement. Where do we go? It doesn't matter if you are teaching grade three at a small elementary school. It doesn't matter if you're teaching university. It doesn't matter if you are traveling the world. When, you're, when your passion, your geekdom comes out and you can bring in other new future geeks, you're going to make a change. Okay? At the end of the day, you need to be passionate. You need to be excited. You need to be a geek. Thank you.